Hey guys, welcome back to another video here on the Nostalgia Factor. Today, guys, I'm going to be doing a collection showcase video for you all, specifically going over the entirety of my collection up to this point in 2024. If you guys have been watching my channel, you know that I'm a massive Final Fantasy fan. Final Fantasy VII is my favorite game of all time, and I have a lot of merchandise from this franchise that I would like to share. And I have a few other pieces from some other games here and there, but, you know, those will just be kind of included in the more we go. So I've done update vlogs here and there about some pieces I've gotten in the collection in the past and honestly at this point I figure it's been about a year since I've done one of these larger collection showcase videos so I figure you know what I'll show you guys everything I have up to this point. And it'll be a nice refresher for those of you who've been following the channel. You have to see some new pieces I've never shown off before. And anyone who's new to the channel or just comes across this video, maybe you'll see something here that's pretty cool. Maybe you guys already own it. Maybe you guys will want to go out and grab some of this merchandise for yourself. But, yeah. Without any further ado, guys, let's just get started into the Final Fantasy collection. And this, by the way, is going to be one long-form video, and let's just roll into her. So guys, the first piece that I have here in the collection is a video game advertisement for Star Ocean The Second Evolution. This was the remake that the game received on the PSP. This was a game ad that I actually got off of eBay some time ago. I believe it was last year. And I ordered it from the UK. I paid a decent amount of money for it off of eBay. But this was really cool. It's a rare double-sided poster. Uh, this side is the one, honestly, that uh, fit the best in terms of which side I would like to have the frame shown on because the other half of it is the standard PSP box art. But it was pretty cool. I ended up buying the poster online, ended up going to a local frame shop and getting it done. And this is just a really cool game ad to have. It looks good. The game is really fun. I've played Star Ocean Second Story R, which is the remake of this game. And it's pretty good, but this is definitely a really cool ad to have in the collection. If you're interested, you might be able to snag some of these on eBay, but they're pretty rare. One of the more recent additions that I have here is a Final Fantasy X promotional lunchbox. I didn't even know this existed until, I think, a few months back. They were Square Enix released about four or five of these things, and it's pretty cool. It's nothing really too big. Uh, it has all the characters from 10 on the back here, including Seymour. It has some of the other portraits and designs from the actual game. It's a nice small little portable lunchbox. They didn't really pay a ton for it on eBay. So if you're interested in getting them, you can definitely pick them up a little bit on the cheap. But those are just pretty cool to have if you're a fan of 10. Speaking of 10, this is a more recent edition I don't think I've shown off in a video. This is a Final Fantasy X RN figure. Uh, this is a Final Fantasy X Play Arts action figure. Uh, this one was released in a line of Final Fantasy X figures, I believe with Auron, Tidus, Yuna, and a few other characters. But I believe for this Play Arts line, I believe it was only those three. But it's pretty cool. Auron's one of my personal favorite characters from the game. The detail on it's pretty good. The condition of the box isn't the best. I bought it off of eBay for a decent price, but coming with that, if you guys can see the corners of the box, it's a little bit beat up. But it was still a pretty cool little addition to the collection. I really wanted something like this for the longest time. You know, just again, because Auron's one of my favorite characters. And yeah, this was just a really good pickup to have. Uh, these here are just random boxes that I have for statues that I'll show you guys here later in the video. Nothing really too noteworthy. I kind of wanted to display these best I can, but I really don't have a ton of space right now in like my dressers or shelves or anything like that at the moment. But these are just some of the general boxes from like FF7 Remake and uh, Advent Children. But we'll get to those figures here in a little bit. Up top here, we also have a few things. In the back there, you guys can see the Final Fantasy VI Super Famicom box that I have back there. I really love VI. It's also one of my favorite games of all time, and there isn't really a ton of merch for it out there. So I ended up just picking up a version of the game that released over in Japan, in this case on the Super Famicom. So pretty cool little pickup there. It wasn't too expensive online. If we transition over here before I talk about those little figures, this is a Aerith plush. This was actually from a company called Ban uh, I think Bandai Presto, I believe is the name of the company, but they released a line of Final Fantasy VII plushes back in late 1997, early 1998, and Ban Presto, they ended up releasing um, not every single party member, they have like Red 13, Barrett, Aerith, and a few other characters, but I ended up picking up this Aerith one online from 97, it's in really good condition, paid a decent bit for it, but considering how old this plush is, and just the detail that's on it, based off of Aerith's original depiction from the original 7, this is just a cool little pickup. 
Those plushes are extremely rare to find, unlike the FF7 remake or Rebirth ones that are out now, which are also good, but you just can't beat the original stuff either. But this was definitely a cool little pickup, and if you're interested, definitely check eBay for them. Over here, nothing too special. This is the original, my original copy of Final Fantasy VII re, uh, on the PS1. I picked this up in 2021 when I played VII for the first time, and obviously, given it's my favorite game of all time, it deserved its own little display. Over here, as far as another game case goes, we have Chrono Trigger, which is also one of my favorite games of all time. I love Chrono Trigger, but again, like Six, there isn't really a ton of merch available for it, so I ended up trying to pick up what I could, and now I have another version of it on the Super Famicom, so it was a cool little pickup here. Now, to address the figures in the front, these are recent additions to the collection from Final Fantasy X. These are Final Fantasy X Coca-Cola figures. Back in the early 2000s, for Final Fantasy IX, X, VII, and VIII, they ended up releasing a line of Coca-Cola figures. And there's three different types of variants for these figures. The chibi versions that I have here, that you guys can see. And they also have, like, crystal variants where they're all red. And then lifelike versions in their, like, proportional human sizes from the game. But for the ten set, I ended up picking up the chibi figures because they are incredibly detailed. I love the style that they have with them, and the fact that unlike some of the other characters from some of the other games, there's actual representation for the Coke brand on here, because each of them are holding like the logo for Coca-Cola, or they're holding a Coke bottle. These are just incredibly detailed, and to pick up a lot of them off of eBay wasn't too much money, so these are just really cool little pickups to get for the collection. Definitely worth checking out, though, if you're interested in these. The next one I want to show you guys down here is actually the first ever piece of merch I got for my Final Fantasy collection about two years ago now. And this is be the Final Fantasy VII Aerith Crisis Core figure. I picked this up off of Amazon for a... I think this was a fairly expensive one at the time. I think it was like 50, 60 bucks or so. But it's in good shape for what it is. Uh, it has Aerith's design from Crisis Core. And it's just a it's a nice little figure for what it is. Uh, Crisis Core was a good game in the compilation, but... The figure was definitely worth picking up, and it kick-started off my current collection, so it was pretty cool. I picked this one up off of Amazon as well. This is before I started getting into eBay, and I have this. It's an Advent Children line figure with Vincent's design from both the original game and Advent Children. This is actually a cheap one to pick up. It's like $35, $40, bucks, but it's a solid figure in the collection. I like Vincent as a character, and this is just another really cool figure. It's kind of the same case for this one. This Vincent figure was from the Advent Children line, but as you guys can tell probably from the design, this Tifa figure was from the original Final Fantasy VII Play Arts line from the early 2000s, with her original design from the PS1 game. This one was actually more expensive, as you may expect. Uh, when I picked it up off of Amazon, it was close to, I believe, 100 bucks at the time. Now these figures are obviously going for more, but this was a cool pickup, and also within the first five figures I ended up picking up for my collection. And unlike how expensive the Tifa one is, the Sephiroth one isn't too horrible, but it is going up there in price. This is the Final Fantasy VII Advent Children's Sephiroth Play Arts Kai figure. I love the design and detail on this. I ended up picking it up off of Amazon. Actually, no, I didn't get this one off of Amazon. I got this figure from a local retro game store chain of mine. And it was a good price for what it was. I gave them some business, and they gave me a good deal on the figure. But it's pretty good. It's going for a lot more right now online. But Sephiroth's just such an iconic villain and an iconic part of the Final Fantasy series that this one's pretty good too. I especially love the detail on the Masamune blade we got there. And yeah, it's just pretty solid overall. Now we go down here, show you guys some of the other stuff that I have. We have Bahamut Sin. I'm not really going to take him out too much or anything, but this is the... Uh, version of Bahamut that appears in Advent Children. And the box isn't in the best shape, and if you guys can tell from the background, there's a lot of yellowing back there, so this one was definitely exposed to the sun at some point. But if you guys can tell there, it's still a decent figure for what it was. It wasn't too expensive, and yeah, I just thought it was a pretty good little pickup to have here for the collection. If we transition over here, though, something I do find just as cool, this is a Star Ocean Second Story R slab that I got from the Square Enix Cafe. I bought this off of eBay back when Star Wars and Second Story R released last year in 2023, and I really enjoyed the game. I need to go back and fully beat it at some point here, but the art style was amazing, and this was just a really cool little display piece if you were into the game. You guys can probably tell in the back there that it was developed by Square Enix and Triace, which was the original company that made it back in the Enix days. 
But this is a cool little piece. You can find these on eBay, although they are more expensive now than what they were originally listed for. But this was pretty cool, actually. I really liked picking this up, and again, I might check out the other Star Ocean games now because of it. But that's definitely a nice little pickup, for sure. And the back there, you guys can see a promotional box set, which is, I believe, the oldest. Outside of the Extra Knight figures I have, I believe this box set is the oldest piece of FF7 merch in the collection as of right now. This is a big box released with four of the Extra Knight figures with Tifa, Barrett, Cloud, and Aerith, along with Frog and Chocobo. So this was a pretty cool pickup. I once again got this one through a retro game store chain of mine for around, I think it was 100 bucks. But again, that was a pretty good deal at the time. The box isn't in the best shape, but it's pretty solid overall. But the biggest thing is definitely the condition of the figures. You guys can see the Chocobo foot impaled by Cloud there, which has been busted off, unfortunately. And Cloud looks like he got a really bad haircut with a few of the spikes that are missing. But regardless of that, though, the other figures are in good shape. And the box itself is pretty solid overall, so it's just a really cool addition regardless. Definitely a bigger piece, though. Over here, without opening it up, this is the Star Ocean Second Story uh, calendar. I didn't even know these existed, but around when Star Ocean Second Story released back in, I believe it was 1998, I believe it was, they released a few of these promotional calendars over in Japan. Well, why not? I'll show you guys it a little bit. But when I bought this one, it was off of eBay, and these are pretty rare pieces of merchandise. This was actually sealed whenever I bought it. And so basically when I opened it, it was the first time it had been opened in like 20 years or so. But it's pretty cool. This is one of at least two or three calendars that was released uh, for Star Ocean Second Story. There's some pretty good artwork in here from the original artist who had worked on uh, the original Star Ocean. But just a nice little pocket calendar. Definitely a nice little collectible for JRPG fans or if you're a fan of the Star Ocean series and whatnot. But it's definitely a cool little pickup. I went through a bit of a phase where I was going through and finding all sorts of Star Ocean merchandise. And this was just one of the cooler items that I ended up picking up off of eBay. So, nice little addition there. And there's even some old phone stickers there in the back that you could put on your uh, cell phone or your telephone. So that's just a cool little addition there. But yeah, definitely one of the rare, a bit more obscure RPG pieces in the collection. If I come across another one in the future, I might pick that one up. So, yeah, that's just a cool little addition there as well. Over here, this is probably the cheapest Extra Knights figure I picked up from Final Fantasy VII. This is the Vincent Valentine Final Fantasy VII figure. This one was only like 30 to 40 bucks off of eBay. Uh, the Vincent figure, as far as the Extra Knights set goes, isn't really that expensive or desirable. But it is still pretty cool, so if you're going to get it, I would recommend getting it now before the price skyrockets. But it's a cool little figure, and I like Vincent as a character as well. Over here we have a custom tin poster that I picked up off of Amazon. Any of these posters that I have framed, or like these tin ones here, you guys can purchase for pretty cheap. This was some uh, fan art somebody made based off of original art uh, done by Akira Toriyama. Uh, rest in peace. But this is a cool little tin poster I picked up. Nice little display. It was only like 10 to 15 bucks when I bought it off of Amazon. So definitely pick this up if you're interested in having a cool display of Chrono Trigger. And down here we also have some of the, again, very uncommon Final Fantasy VI merchandise with some of the keychains here. We have several of the party members here with, from left to right, Shadow, Gal, Strago. Uh, we have Sabin, Edgar, Celis, and Terra in her Esper form. There are a lot more of these out there, and maybe I'll pick them up at some point, but these were just for a good price as a lot that I ended up finding on eBay. So that's the reason I ended up picking these up now. But these are just really cool, and again, there isn't a ton of Final Fantasy VI merch out there. So if you're interested in trying to pick these up, definitely look them up on eBay. They are pretty cool and detailed, and there's a few different lines of these keychains. So you do have some variety out there. Now some of the stuff I'm going to show you guys up here is something I have not shown in videos uh, as of yet. And we have uh, still quite a few things to talk about here, so let's just continue to roll into her. With this Final Fantasy X Art FX uh, Unifigure, uh, Art FX back in the early 2000s released a lot of these, not life size, but larger action figures from the cast of Final Fantasy X. And I bought this one off of eBay for a good price for around 60 bucks. This one's in good shape, has the accessories like Unis Staff and the figure. The box is in really good shape. And I love X, it's also one of my favorite games of all time, or my second or third favorite Final Fantasy, uh, depending on when you ask me. 
But this is just a really cool figure. I love Yuna as a character and most of the cast. And it's just really cool little addition there. This was definitely really, really nice. And again, you just don't see this kind of merch available anymore for some of your favorite games. Ten has a decent amount of stuff, but this is definitely one of the cooler lines of figures to get, although they are getting more expensive. Up top there, this is something I picked up a Facebook Marketplace. This is a Final Fantasy VII Cloud figure. Uh, this is, I can't remember the name of the company, but they produced a number of Final Fantasy figures. This one really is anything too special or noteworthy. I bought it for 10 bucks off of Facebook Marketplace years ago, but it's a cool little figure for what it is. So uh, I bought it because it was cheap, and again, it's Cloud. So, yeah, there's that. Now, we also have Tifa down here from Advent Children. Uh, this was, it's similar, it's from the same line as the Sephiroth and Vincent figure I showed you guys earlier. But the difference is this one was cheaper off of eBay because the box is a little bit rough and it doesn't have a lot of the accessories. But at this point, when I buy collectibles off of eBay or anywhere online for that matter, I really don't care about that too much if it's missing like a set of hands because I just want the figure for the collection. And if it shaves off like 20, 30 bucks that I'm not paying for it, well, that's a good deal in my book. This is a cool figure and box is in good shape regardless, so definitely a cool addition to the collection. Now, something over here, it's from the same line as the Yuna Final Fantasy X figure I just showed you guys. But this is the Art FX Tetis figure. This was the first ever one they released for their Final Fantasy X line. They released several of them for every party member in the front of the game. And this is the biggest one. And I don't know why. This Tetis figure is really cool. It's detailed. It's the same design of Tetis in X. But the difference is with this box, the reason it was so cheap... What, it was like 50 bucks or so. It's because it's missing the sword. So it doesn't have the water sword that Titus is known for, but honestly, it's what I just said about the Tifa figure. If not having the sword is going to save me like 40, 50 bucks for what these figures are going for complete, I am perfectly fine with it not having it. Because honestly, the figure and the box are just cool enough on its own to have another good piece of Final Fantasy merch in the collection. So this is definitely a cool addition, although this is uh, pretty big for what it is. But it's still awesome. Down here I have a partially, not complete set, but a partially complete set of the Final Fantasy VII Potion Cans. Square Enix back in the late 90s, early 2000s released a number of these Potion Cans based off of the original game. Advent Children, uh, Crisis Core, and of course the spin-off Turks game that nobody remembers. But these are in pretty good shape. The boxes are in amazing condition, and so are the cans. I love the designs on them. The little mini figures that they were packaged with when you would go and purchase these for your collection or to drink the soda or whatever, uh, they're still in there. There's still several more of these potion cans that I have yet to get, and if I can find them on the cheap on eBay, I'll continue to get them because these things are just absolutely freaking cool. So I love the box art on these, the cans, and honestly, it's just a pretty unique collectible for an RPG. So... But yeah, these are definitely cool. Keep an eye on these online if you are interested. Over here, we have the Final Fantasy VII Advent Children action figure for, I believe, what is the name of this thing? Shadow Creeper. This one really is anything too noteworthy. I picked this one up online um, on eBay some time ago just because I really liked the design of it. It was for a good price. It was like $35, $40, bucks, so it wasn't too horrible. But this is just a cool little addition. This was a one-off enemy summoned by Kadaj and the Sephiroth Remnant crew when they were attacking and fighting Cloud. And of course, uh, whenever they attack Edge, they released a few of these things. But it's just a cool monster design from Advent Children. Decent movie for what it is as well. So this is definitely a unique little figure to pick up if you're interested. Continue on though, guys. Here is the next piece. This is probably one of the biggest ones I have in the collection. This is the Cloud and Fenrir figure from Final Fantasy VII Advent Children. This was actually one of the first pieces I ever got from my collection a few years ago. This was a graduation gift that some family members gave to me. And it was very nice of them to do so because this thing is not cheap by any means. And it's pretty cool. It comes with the Cloud figure from Advent Children, Cloud's new sword, and the Fenrir motorcycle. It's a pretty good piece, actually. Uh, you can find these on eBay and Amazon as well. But again, these are more expensive just given the sheer size of them but this is a really cool piece and the fact that it was from some family members also makes it a bit more special for me personally but that is definitely one of the biggest physical pieces i actually have in the collection as of right now 
Next one I want to kind of divert your guys' attention to is this one over here. This is a wrapped up Final Fantasy VII Rebirth promotional poster. Uh, this was something that they had at a Comic-Con when they first revealed Rebirth earlier in the year. Uh, these were given out to people who attended the actual convention. I, of course, did not actually go to the convention itself uh, because it's in New York and it's a fair distance away. But I picked that up off of eBay for cheap. It was around like 15 bucks or so at the time, so not too expensive. Pretty cool piece. I might get framed up one day, but if you're interested in them, they probably have more listings available on the internet. So the next set of pieces I want to show you guys here are actually my collection of Advent, or not Advent, but uh, Extra Night figures. This is the newest one I have in the collection with good old Sephiroth. Picked this one up for pretty cheap on eBay and this one's a pretty cool figure I like the detail on this one if we continue to move our way up here we got the Aerith one also in pretty good shape really like all these extra night figures I'm actually pretty close to having a complete set of them but the Aerith ones there has got the staff and the chocobo we got the cloud one up here which is one of the more pricier ones but it's pretty cool you got cloud two versions of cloud swords from the original game and this one has a bit of damage on it if you guys can see the tape on the side but again don't really care for that too much since the box is in good shape we divert our attention over to here with the red 13 extra knights figure this one was one of probably the most expensive one it's the rarest extra knights figure because i don't think they really sold too many pieces of it anyway at least compared to some of the others it's in really good shape except for the tail that broke off but again, given how rare these things are, I don't mind that detail too, too much. And the last one I currently have is this Extra Knights figure of Barrett. Uh, this one wasn't too expensive off of eBay. It was about 40 to 50 bucks. It doesn't really come with anything extra, but considering how rare it is to find Barrett merchandise from the original game and compilation, not getting the remake stuff, then this just makes the piece a lot cooler. This one also has a bit of damage, like the Cloud one, but it's not taped up. Uh, well, I actually know it is taped up along the sides there, just to make sure the box stays intact. But it's still pretty cool nonetheless. And those are the Extra Night ones I have as of right now. The only one I'm missing is the Tifa figure, so whenever I end up doing another one of these collection update videos, uh, I might have that one by that point. These over here are Final Fantasy X-2 keychains. These were originally released back in the early 2000s, I believe 2003 or 4, when X-2 was released. And these are pretty cool. These are little keychain straps that they released from Square. These were released in Japan. That's Yun in her original outfit from Ten Two. And if we go down here, she's in the Songstress dress fair. If you guys have played Ten Two, you know that whole Songstress mechanic. But this is another pretty cool piece. These aren't anything too big or crazy. I bought these off of eBay for about ten to fifteen a piece. And they are pretty uncommon, but they're cool little figures, nice little straps, and they're in good shape for what they are. So if you're interested in some 10-2 merch or 10 merchandise, uh, these are definitely worth picking up. They do have more of these. They have a Riku and a Pain one. So if you're interested in getting the whole set, it shouldn't set you back too much money. But I didn't even know these things existed, to be honest with you. And if we transition over here to some of the other stuff, this is just going to be some general merch and that kind of thing. Nothing too crazy. We have another tin poster over here for Chrono Trigger. Uh, that's another one I picked up off of eBay based off of Akira Toriyama's original art. Again, this one was up, well, 10 to 15 bucks off of Amazon, not eBay. If you're interested in these, again, you can go and find them online now. But not really any rare merch, but just a cool display. Same case up here. This is one of the first ever displays I got for my room, uh, for my collection. This is a wall scroll. For Final Fantasy 7 based off of some it was a strategy guide that released years ago I remember but that wall scroll is a pretty cool little recreation of that cover it has all the party members on there except for Sid and it's just pretty cool it was only 10 to 15 bucks so again you guys can go and uh, check that out if you want honestly all these wall scrolls and tin posters were around the same price point so same case with this one over here which was the second ever one I got this is Final Fantasy VII Advent Children with all the party members on there, including Zack. Uh, this is based off some fan art somebody made online and I guess converted into a poster. So, But it's a pretty cool addition as well. Uh, small, simple, and to the point. So if you're into Advent Children and you like this style of art, definitely recommend checking this one out on Amazon. Over here, nothing too special once again. I really like these. Uh, so both this, this is a Final Fantasy VI poster that I picked up off of Amazon 
and a Chrono Trigger poster I also picked up off of Amazon. Uh, this is based off original artwork from Final Fantasy VI when it released back in 1994. And this over here isn't promotional art or anything like that. This was a custom-made poster somebody made with all the party members on Epoch uh, over Guardian 1000 AD. So, this is a custom poster, whereas this one's based off the art. Both of these were around $15 to $20 off of Amazon, and they weren't really expensive to get the actual poster, but the frame job itself was pretty pricey. I went to a local frame shop in my area, and it was around, I'd say probably like 70 some bucks a piece to get them done. But these are beautifully done, the work was awesome, and I love both these posters from two of my favorite games. So, these are definitely really cool little displays to have picked up. So again, if you guys are interested in checking out any of these posters, definitely pick them up on Amazon. Not sponsored or anything, of course. Just a recommendation. But those are pretty cool. Now down here is where we start transitioning to some of the other stuff I've picked up. Uh, down here we'll start with this as one of the most recent pickups I have never shown in a video up to this point. It's a Final Fantasy VII Mechanical Arts figure based off the Sister Ray. Uh, the cannon that was in June on that was eventually moved to Midgar. Uh, this was pretty cool. I found this in a local thrift shop, actually, for $9. It is a little rough, as you guys can see. There's some wear and tear on the outer side of the box, but honestly, this was a really cool pickup. The Mechanical Arts line for Final Fantasy VII includes a lot of the, like, motorcycles that Cloud drove, or you have, like, different firearms that are used, like Vincent Cerberus pistol, or, in this case, the Sister Ray, or even the Highwind is even available as well. So, but this was a pretty cool pickup. This thing goes for around like 75 to 175 bucks on eBay. Uh, this thing on average goes to 100 and 150. So finding for nine bucks at a yard sale facility of all places, that was just an awesome pickup. So definitely really cool on that front. And we transition down here. This is the box for one of the original Final Fantasy VII figures released by a company called uh, Kotobukiya. I'm probably, I'm butchering the name, I'm sure, but uh, Kotobukiya, I believe it's called. If you guys are familiar with merchandise from 7 or any of the original Final Fantasies, they did a number of these specialized figures or statues, which I intend to pick more up on. I just think they're really cool, in addition to some of the newer remake stuff that's been coming out. But these figures, though, these statues are getting rare to find. This one was from the late 90s, early 2000s, but that's the box for it. Down here we have a Tifa remake statue from one of those boxes I showed you guys earlier. This one's pretty well detailed. I really like this one as well. Uh, this one was pricier when I bought it, based off her remake design. That was, a, I believe, around 100 to 150 bucks to pick that up. So definitely a pricier figure, but a really cool one. Down here, we also have two keychains I picked up based off Tifa and Yuffie. Uh, they made a number of Final Fantasy VII keychains in Japan back in the late 90s, and Gachapon machines where you could get them. These are two of them. Uh, they're pretty well detailed for what they are. Really cool little pickups if you're into some of the smaller merch. We have a copy of Final Fantasy VII Remake back here. Uh, surprise, surprise on that front that I don't own that game. But back here, if you guys can see, we got the steel book, we got the soundtrack, and of course we got the art book. So that was all part of that Final Fantasy VII Remake Collector's Edition, which I also have the same thing for Rebirth and for uh, the music soundtrack that I've unboxed here on this channel. Over here, and I'll show you guys the box, kind of moving in order. We have another Tifa statue here. This was actually recently released for Rebirth uh, in the Square Enix Cafe where it was first revealed. This is a Tifa figure and a Cloud statue that I still have yet to get. This one's depicting one of her moves, Dolphin Blow, from the actual game. And if you guys look here, this is definitely the most detailed uh, statue, I would say, out of all of these, except for maybe the Red 13 one. But it's small and has a unique pose. It's just really cool. It's convenient to display, uh, definitely compared to some of the other statues I have over here that I'll show you guys. But this one's just a really cool one. Definitely recommend picking that one up. If we transition over here, we have another simple one. This is an Aerith statue from FF7 Remake. Uh, this one wasn't part of either of the lines I just showed you. This was a one-off released from Square Enix, uh, where they made a number of simpler figures from the actual game. But this one was pretty cool. I picked this one off of eBay for like 50, 60 bucks. So, cool little statue there. I didn't take it out for display purposes. I think it just honestly looks better there right now. But it's just another cool era statue to have. Uh, we have a copy of Advent Children back there on DVD. Nothing really too special or expensive or anything, but still a cool addition regardless. Transitioning back here, that box I showed you guys up here, this is that statue. 
one of the original uh, Kotobukaya statues that were released for seven. There's still Silver Mole out there that I have to get, but just another cool original statue based off Tifa's original design. Over here we have a statue of Rufus Shinra, also from one of those big boxes I have across the room. This is based off his Advent Children look, and this is another really cool one, one of the first pieces of FF7 merch I got in the collection. I like Rufus as a secondary antagonist in the game, since he's the head of the Shinra Corporation. And this is a pretty cool statue, simple and to the point. Of course, not as detailed as this Red 13 statue, also released for Final Fantasy VII Remake, which I absolutely love the detail on. Red's one of the more notable characters from Remake that I really enjoyed, even going down to Rebirth. But you have a lot of cool detail there from his tattoos, his headdress, the mane, the flame at the tip of his tail. It's a very detailed statue, and I absolutely love this. This was also a graduation gift from some family members, or a Christmas gift, rather. But this is just really awesome. I absolutely love this one as well. Definitely one of my favorite statues in the collection. And given the fact how much I enjoy Red as a character, that's just really cool. If we transition to the front here, uh, these are, this was the first line of FF7 Polygon PS1 figures that was released. I know there's a second wave out now with like Rufus and Yuffie and the Safe Point and a number of other characters like the Turks. But I don't really have them yet. But I do have Reno, Sephiroth, Barrett, Aerith, Tifa, Cloud, Red 13, uh, the special Chase variant, which was uh, Cloud and Drag pretty much. And then the one at the end here isn't one of those Polygon figures. This is one of the Coca-Cola figures released for 7, one of the chibi ones for Aerith. I think that the FF7 Coca-Cola chibi ones are cool, but the Final Fantasy X ones I showed you guys earlier I think are cool because they have unique poses and they actually have the Coke branding on it. So, But I think that's just generally overall far cooler in my mind. And that's really it, guys, for the bulk of my current collection here on the channel. There are some odds and ends that I didn't show you guys, like some of the framed posters I picked up um, off of Amazon that I got framed. But honestly, they're just general posters, nothing really too special or noteworthy. But that's the bulk of my current collection here that I wanted to show you guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed watching this original one, or this uh, longer video, I should say. But I wanted to do one of these because this collection has grown a lot. There's a lot of pieces that you guys have seen that I haven't even shown in videos yet. And a lot of you guys who come by the channel are either you're curious to see some gaming merchandise or big Final Fantasy fans or, you know, you just enjoy seeing this content in general. And I really appreciate that. And given the fact that I want to try and maybe do one of these like once a year, you know, just to do an overall showcase of the collection uh, and share it with you guys. That's one of the biggest things I enjoy doing. But since it's been 11 months, I figured I'd do one of these longer videos showing you guys all the Final Fantasy merch that I currently have in the collection, mostly pertaining to 7. But thank you guys once again for checking this video out. I really appreciate every single one of you guys here on the channel who come back and want to join me on this nostalgic gaming journey where I review old retro video games no one talks about anymore and do videos like this and the occasional collab. But let me know what you guys think about this collection in the comment section down below if you're a Final Fantasy fan, if you guys have any of these pieces in your own collections, if you guys want any of them, if you guys collect Final Fantasy merchandise or you have your own gaming collectibles. You know, Let me know any of your thoughts and feelings in the comment section down below. I feel like this is a good way to interact with the community, especially when you have someone who is dedicated to a certain game or series for this long. And I absolutely love Final Fantasy, especially Seven. But like you guys saw, there's some odds and ends chucked in from some other properties. Pretty much all Square Enix, actually. So, But let me know all your thoughts and feelings in the comment section, guys. I really appreciate every single one of you guys. If you did enjoy it, give it a like. It does help out the channel. And it shows the type of content you guys want to see more from me. And, yeah. And, of course, subscribe to the channel if you guys want to keep up with future videos coming here on the show. After this video goes up, the next video will be the Mario Party DS review, uh, which was the one that was voted on most in the community tab. I have a few YouTuber cameos planned for that one, so that's the reason why that video hasn't come out yet. But I wanted to give you guys some kind of video uh, to kind of check out here on the channel that's newer uh, before that Mario Party DS video comes out. So, But, like I said, guys... Thank you all for checking it out once again, if you did stick through this longer video, and let me know what you guys think. Otherwise, thank you guys once again for checking it out, and until next time, this has been Ryan from the Nostalgia Factor saying, keep on gaming.